in this video we are going to learn how to plot graphs okay well we have the simple pendulum experiment table of value here you can see just two columns it's not only two columns okay after running this experiment we had a large um, a table of value okay but we are just to plot t squared against l and so i extracted just those two columns of interest okay now we have this graph sketch here and then with some values scale already chosen I want to quickly explain why we actually used this scale that's very important okay now on the horizontal axis if you look at it we used 1 centimeter equal to 20 units since you are plotting t squared against L it means that t squared is going to be the vertical axis and then L is going to be the horizontal axis why did I actually use 20, 20 units for our L axis? The same thing that I just came here, saw that this is increasing 2020 and then I decided to fix it up here. No, that's not what I did. I did a mini calculation. Recall that to get your units, I already told you that it's going to be helpful if you use the guide. Highest value in the column of the table you are about to plot divided by number of lines available for plots. So what did I do? I had to come to this. Please, I, I want to state this before I proceed. The centimeter, in choosing your scale, the centimeter you chose depends on you. It does not concern anybody. But the unit does not really, really depend on you. You are not the one that decides the unit. The unit is dependent on the values given in the table. Is that okay? The values you obtained from the experiment that you are about to plot. So, in choosing this centimeter, I decided it's not a business. You can also decide to choose another centimeter. I decided to use 11cm. One, one you know, from one thick line to another thick line of your graph is one centimeter. From this to this, one centimeter. From this to this, another one centimeter. Now, on that basis that I choose to use one, one centimeter, I now counted the number of lines I believe for plot. For one one centimeter, how many lines will be available for plot? Please watch. This is your zero axis, we know that. The, the origin. That is why I use red line for it. Vector horizon. So, from here to here will be line number one, number two, three, four, five, six, seven. Of course, you know it's not ideal to plot on this. Because it's the marginal line. So, I didn't count it among it. Now, it shows clearly that there are seven lines available for plot using one one centimeter. If you use two, two centimeters, for example, from here to here is two centimeters, that is from this zero to this forty is two centimeters. If I choose to use two, two centimeters for my plot, it means I will count from this to this two centimeters with line number one, line number two, another two centimeters, and line number three. This is supposed to be line number four, but of course, you know, we don't usually plot on the marginal line. So it actually means that there are three lines that we look for plot, which means you come here and divide 140 by that three. But I decided to use 22cm, 11 centimeter rather. I decided to use 11 centimeter on this axis. And the number of lines that we look for plot is seven lines. So I came here and divided 140, which is the highest value on this L axis, by the seven lines that we look for plot. This will help me to actually get the unit faster, and then I will be sure that the highest value in this column will appear here. You'll agree with me, there are some cases after selecting your unit and fixing it up. <coughs> At the end of everything, you would realize that the highest value of your table did not appear there. You start cleaning, cleaning, and before you know, the graph is gone. This little calculation will quickly help you to get your accurate unit or approximately accurate unit without any stress, okay? With confidence. That is that for the horizontal. What about the vertical? Why did I choose? For this vertical, it is 2 centimeters representing 1 unit that I selected. Why? Remember, the centimeter I decided. I looked at it and said, okay, the vertical, there are more lines there. Alright, so that being the case, let me pick 2, two centimeters. Now, if I pick 2, two centimeters based on what I have here, from this origin, you have 1 cm, 2 cm. Remember, I'm using 2 cm, so every 2 cm represents a line number. So, from here to here, line number 1. From here, another 2 cm, line number 2. From here, another 2 cm, line number 3. I did that continuously, so this will be 4, 5, 6. 
And then seven, you know you can plot on this horizontal line here. So there are seven lines available for plot on the vertical axis. Hence, I went to the T-square axis, located the highest value, which is 5.64, then divided it by seven lines. When I divided it, I got 0 0.8057 and other things. 0 0.8057, you can check that please, huh? 5.64 divided by 7 lines. Now, that's 0 0.8 something, what will you do? If you select 0 0.8, it will not be ideal because what your calculator gave to you is more than 0 0.8. So if you use 0 0.8, you might be unfortunate that after fixing it up, the highest value may not enter. Remember, I'm working with the graph I have here. So, I had to approximate. And when you are approximating, trying to work on your graph, in selecting units, it's best to increase the value. So I approximated this to, to 1, that is 0 0.8 approximately equal to 1. And that is why I chose every 2 cm, 1 unit like that. So it will be increasing 1, 1 unit, 1, 1 unit. So please, this mini calculation is very, very important, alright? Determine the number of lines available for plots in your graph based on the centimeter you want to use. That is your choice. Then come to the column here, divide the highest value by the number of lines available for plot. The next video we're going to look at how to now trace these points here. You don't need to come and start approximating everything just to get your value on this graph, no. If you do that, it will limit the accuracy of your work. You can actually get all these points or approximately equal to these points on the graph. In the next video, we're going to find that out. But remember, you need to get the value of each of these small lines, okay? Once again, we'll talk about that. So let us quickly see how we trace our points, how we locate our points in our graph. All these points we got here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. How do we get them? How do we locate their position in the graph? To do that, we'll need this formula already that we've given to you, okay? And the meaning of each of these terms has been explained. So I'm going to use it to just show you how two points we obtained. With that knowledge, you'll learn how the rest were got. Now, with the principle I gave you regarding this formula, you can plot a graph within less than five minutes. You can. So let us see how it goes. I want to locate how we got this point here. Look at there is a point there. In your graph, the first point, the length is 20 cm, and uh, the value of uh, t squared is 0 0.806. So we say you are searching for 0 0.806 in your graph. What do you do? Go to your table, you have 0 0.806 which you are looking for. So, we now come to this. Value C. The value you are looking for. You punch your calculator, follow along with your calculator. 0 0.806 minus. This value is between 0 and 1. Is that not so? Therefore, the value minus value taken from. The value of the unit from which 0 0.806 is taken from your graph is 0. Why? If 0 0.806 is between 0 and 1, you know that you have to cross 0 before you now get to 0 0.806. That is why we say the value taken from is 0. So we're going to do 0 0.806 minus 0, still give us 0 0.806, then divide it by the value of each small line along this axis. Each small line along this axis is what? It's going to be 0 0.1. How do we know that? Remember, previously, we are also given a relationship that to get a value of each small line, it's going to be the unit you selected for that axis divided by the number of small lines between the centimeter you chose. Now, remember that in this vertical axis, the centimeter we use is 2 to what centimeter? We use 2 to centimeter. Between the 2 to centimeters, how many small lines do you have? 10. 1 cm is 5 small lines, 2 cm contain 10 small lines. So it's going to be the unit you selected on the axis, which is 1 1 unit for the vertical axis, you know that already, divided by the 10 small lines. 1 divided by 10 will give us 0 0.1. So each of the small lines is 0 0.1. Now let us go back here. Remember we got 0 0.806 in our calculator before, so we're going to divide it by 0 0.1. If you divide it by 0 0.1, you get 8.06. That 8.06 now means that the position, are you getting of the line 
in the graph that corresponds to the value you are seeking for from your table, which is 0 0.806. The position of the line is on the 8.06 line above this zero. We have 8.06. Now, these lines here, we don't have it like 8.06 there, so we need to approximate this thing from 8.06 to 8. The 8.06 approximately, normal approximation is 8. So what do you do? It means that the point we are looking for is on the 8th line at both 0. We now come to that. 0 count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You can see this is the 8th line above 0. So you trace it. You can see with the dotted red line. As you are tracing it, this 20 will also be traced upward because it corresponds to 20. Both of them will meet at this point. You can see here. You cross. That's where they met. You've located that point. Now let us see how we got this last point. Again, from your table, this last point, the length there was 140. That's how we have it here on the horizontal. There was a value of uh, the t square. The t square is uh, 5.640. So that's what we now want to see. We want to get 5.640 on the graph. So what do we do? We punch 5.640. Minus this 5.640 from where will it be taken from? Value taken from is what? You come to this, it is taken from the visible unit you are seeing, 5. Because 5.640 is between 5 and 6. And you know you need to cross 5 right, before you get to 5.640. So it is now going to be 5.640, the value we are seeking for, minus value taken from in graph, which is 5. Good. If you punch, you are going to have 0 0.64. Divided by the value of each small line, the vertical axis, which is 0 0.1. That gave me 6.4. 6.4, approximately 6.4 in normal approximation is 6. Is that not so? It therefore means that the point we are looking for, which is 5.640, is on the sixth line, sixth line, above 5. So you come to 5 and then you count. This is the line representing 5 minutes. So you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Do you see that? 6. Look at the 6th line. So what you need to do, you follow your graph. These lines are already projected. You know that they're already projected. So you follow it. Follow it. Correspond to 40. So you take that 40 up. You can see where they met. So you locate that point. Now I've told you how to use this relationship. Okay? And that is that. That is how we got all this point. So you can follow along to get the other point. In the next video, we are going to see how we obtained the values that we use in calculating this slope. Now we want to see how we calculate our slope, how we obtain the points that we use in getting our slope. To get your slope, the first thing you do is to even draw the slope. And in drawing slope, you draw a horizontal line at any convenient point of your choice, a vertical line at any convenient point of your choice. The main thing is that the horizontal and vertical must meet at 90 degrees and they must touch the graph outline. You can see this is the outline of the graph and when the horizontal touched the graph here, the vertical touched the graph there. So I've actually drawn my slope. The next is now to obtain the value of this point for the horizontal and vertical and the value of this point for the horizontal and vertical. Is that okay? So how do we go about that? The first one, you can see for the L, L1 value is 20. It's very clear, you can see it on it. L1 is 20, so look at it, 20 centimeters for L1. Now L1 will correspond to T1 squared. And T1 squared, the value will be this, you take it to the vertical axis. So, Watch that, you can see from here, taking the vertical axis, I dotted it. It came out here on this line. That is line number what? If you look through and count, that is line number 8, taking from 0. So what do you do to get the value of that line number 8? It's very simple. You're going to do 8, that is line number 8, times the value of each small line. Remember that each small line on this vertical axis is 0 0.1, isn't it? And now you're talking about the eighth line there, so it's going to be 0 0.1 times 8, or 8 times 0 0.1.
If you do that, add it to the unit you took it from. Line number 8 is between unit 0 and unit 1. So you took it from what? 0. So when you do 8 times 0 0.1, you are going to add it to 0. Of course, if you punch that in your calculator, it's giving me 0 0.8. And that's how I got T1 squared to be 0 0.8 square second. Then it is time to obtain the value of L2 here and then T2 squared. I dotted this thing like this, it's not compulsory. In your graph book, the lines are already drawn. The small lines and whatever lines are already drawn for you there, okay? So how do we obtain the value of L2 and T2 squared? You can see where they touch. L2, there's no problem, it's very clear, 140 centimeter. So our T2 squared now, tracing it from here, okay? It came out on line number 9. Line number 9 above the unit 5. You can see that the line number 9 you're talking about is between unit 5 and unit 6. So it's taken from unit 5 since it's between them. Now, how do we obtain the value of that line? You do something similar to the first, which is 0 0.9. Oh, sorry about that. Which is 9 times the ninth line times 0 0.1. Then add it to the unit you took it from. Once again, line number 9, that is 9 times value of this small line, which is 0 0.1 on the vertical axis. Whatever you get, add it to unit 5, where this line is taken from. So it's going to be plus 5. That gave me 5.9. That becomes your T2 squared. And that is exactly how I got 5.9. So you see with that in, in, in drawing your slope, your slope can actually be taken from any small line or if, if it doesn't fall on a thick line because my own could not fall on any major thick line for the, for the vertical. So I had to choose a particular small line, it doesn't make any difference. You can calculate the value of that small line using the knowledge of what I've already explained previously. Now having obtained the values of your T and uh, L, you now need to substitute. Please. Do not go and use y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. The question didn't ask you to plot y against x. Quantities we are used to represent them, okay? So you use those quantities there. Substitute of 5.9 minus 0 0.8 divided by L2 minus L1, that is 140 minus 20. If you punch your calculator, you get 0 0.0425 square second per centimeter. Remember, this is a centimeter because the length axis, the values there are in centimeter. I didn't convert it, you saw it from the table. Now, because we would like to get our result in SI unit, we need to convert from these centimeters to meters. And how do we do that? Please, I quickly want to interpret the real meaning of this for you so that you know why I divided by 0 0.01. If I have 0 0.0425, Square second per per cm. This per cm means divided by centimeter. That's the meaning of that. Take note. Now, this over centimeter, this centimeter means one centimeter. That's the meaning of that. The word per means for each one value of that thing. So you can say now that this per centimeter means that the denominator is one centimeter. That's the interpretation. All you need to do is to find the equivalent of 1 cm in meter. And 1 cm in meter is 0 0.01. Remember, remember to convert from cm to meters is that same value of 100. So you get 0 0.01. You can now see why I had to divide this value in per cm by 0 0.01 in order to convert to what? Meters. So doing that, 1 cm becomes 0 0.01 meters. If you divide this, you get 4.25 square second per meter as your SI unit. Now we are done with obtaining our slope. We shall talk about other necessary things like how to determine the acceleration due to gravity once you've done the slope. In that case, you'll be given the, the, the formula to use in obtaining it. We'll see that in the next video.